This is the Stratomatic Baseball Excel 1973 Carryover League. Brought to you by the Shrimp Trawler YouTube channel. Welcome back, baseball fans, to the 1970-73 Carryover League. We are in the American League Midwest with a best-of-seven series between the Minnesota Twins and the Chicago White Sox. And it is a very competitive division. Not the best division, but competitive nonetheless. Uh, this series opened up in Minnesota. We'll just go right into what's happened. Game one, Stan Bonson versus Jim Cott. And this game turns into a snooze fest of missed opportunities and nobody getting any clutch hits. Uh, bottom of the third inning, an RBI double by Tony Oliva. And that would be the scoring today. Jim Cott manages to scatter six hits and three walks through a complete game shutout, one nothing victory a game the White Sox let get away. The Twins came into this series in first place and increased their lead with this 1-0 victory. So let's see what happens in game two at Metropolitan Stadium in Minnesota. It is gonna be Burt be home by 11 for the Twins going up against Wilbur Wood. We love Wilbur Wood here on the YouTube channel. He pitches quite frequently as you'll find out soon. Um, this one is a 5-2 victory for the White Sox. They get early runs. RBI single by Dick Allen. Two-run homer by Tom Egan, a platoon catcher who hits righties better than lefties. A home run again by Egan in the seventh, a solo shot. What is going on with the platoon players of the White Sox? They're coming through big. 5-2 win, that's plenty of... Uh, runs for Mr. Wood. The interesting story here, the only two runs of the game was Rick Rennick, the number nine hitter of the Twins. It's a two-run homer. You'll have to go all the way back a year ago, opening day, White Sox at the Seattle Mariners. Rennick was on the Mariners last year. That game went 18 innings, and Rennick had a three-run homer off of Wood. That was the only runs Wilbur Wood gave up which is very bizarre. Um, Rick Rennick's the only hitter in the American League to have Wilbur Wood's number, as he has two homers and five RBIs on teams that have had scored 27 scoreless innings against Wood. And a little bizarre little factoid of the week there. That's otherwise useless information, but whatever. Uh, game three, we go to Comiskey Park, and it is going to be... Tom Murphy, who threw a no-hitter earlier this year, and Tom Bradley. And Bradley and the Chai Sox get the upper hand, a two-run homer by Buddy Bradford, a two-run single by Jim LaFay, uh, a close game, because the Twins had homers by Joe Haig and solo homers by Heisel and Oliva. Bottom of the eighth inning, though, big three-run homer at Dick Allen. It's a 7-3 White Sox win. They go up 2-1 to one in the series. And now they're creeping up on first place. So we go to game four in Comiskey. And this one, same kind of game. The Twins get early footing. A couple singles in the first. Two nothing. Uh, twins lose the lead in the fourth when Bill Melton hits a solo shot. It's 2-2 two -two into the seventh. We have Dave Goltz against Stan Bonson on short rest. Goltz is not that great against lefties. So in the seventh inning, when two righties get on, Aparicio triples and Tom Egan singles, and some lefties coming up, they go to Ron Paranowski, the usually capable lefty reliever, but he brings a big old can of kerosene into the seventh inning, gives up a two-run homer to Buddy Bradford, three-run homer to Buddy Bradford, 
And it is a 6-3 game. The White Sox bullpen, the beleaguered bullpen, not given much faith. They somehow managed to get the final six outs. And yes, folks, the Chicago White Sox, after their losing game one, rip off three straight wins, largely aided by the Twins' bats going cold. They have a 3-1 series lead, and in addition to a 3-1 series lead for the Chi Sox, let's take a look at the overall standings now in a bunched up America League Midwest. Here you have it. The uh, White Sox have come all the way back to catch the Twins, as this division is not very good. The net is uh, plus two, minus two. This is eight games under 500, this division. So this is this, uh, the little sister this year. Last year was the American League North that was so bad. But they're doing better with the Tigers and Indians. And even the expansion teams aren't that bad. Uh, up for grabs, the last place Royals are still just three and a half out, even though it seems highly unlikely they'll get back into this thing. So the Twins need to stop the bleeding. Uh, the Twins have played pretty good up until this series. They uh, beat the Orioles, for instance. They play the A's tight. Uh, two traditional nemesis for the Twin franchise. Only to go down 3-1 to the White Sox. It's time to turn it around today in a Game 5 from Chicago. And we got a matchup of pitchers for you folks. Coming back on short rest, a rematch of Game 2. It is... Burt be home, Bly Levin, for the Twins, against, you know it folks, I don't even have to tell you, it's YouTube sensation, Wilbur Wood for the White Sox. Wilbur Wood has pitched 18 innings and 14 innings on YouTube before, just as something to do, <laughs> even though realistically he certainly couldn't probably do that, but we had him pitch those long, long extra inning games. To somehow reason the fact that strat matic and the White Sox allowed him to pitch on two days rest. Something that I'm not going to have him do, but I will have him pitch long into extra innings if the teams cooperate. So, with that, let's get started from Comiskey Park. Twins desperate for a win. It is Larry Heisel to lead it off. 59 off Woods, guys to right. Cleo James, bounce to short. Carew, 35 is a single. And Harmon Killebrew pops the first. Walt Williams leads off. 37. Bounces to short. Aparicio, 56. Short X. We have Chico Cardenas playing short. Very 2 e 12 at short. Very reliable player. And Carlos May, 47 is a K. Top of two. Tony Oliva and Dawn, 2 8. Rolls to first. George Meterwald, 112. Sky's the center. And Jim Holt, 25. Triple 108 double is a two base hit. And Chico Cardness, 1 9. Let's take a look at Chico Cardness card of 19. 71, arguably his best year. Uh, 264, 18 homers, 25 RBIs, a 2E12 at short. And for this era, this is a very good splash player at shortstop where the position was not normally uh, an offensive one during this timeline. But the Twins have one of the better hitters at short. And he comes through to here. One to six for the homer. He misses it. He'll get the double and the RBI. And the Twins are on the board. And here is Rick Rennick versus Wilbur Wood. This matchup has been costly for Wood in the past. 56. This guy is a left. All right, bottom of two. It's Dick Allen. 58, double one to seven. Off by 11 is a two base hit. Buddy Bradford, 34, rolls a short. Tony Muser, 37, skies to right. And Melton, one nine, homer one, fly ball the rest is fly ball the rest. And Allen ends the inning on second base. Top of the third, it'll be Larry Heisel. 47, single one to six. Lines out. Cleo James, 1 5, the base hit for the B Steeler. Tom Egan is a plus one arm catcher. And I think they're going to try a stolen base. And he rolls a four and is safe. Cleo's at second for Rod Carew with one out. 
35 for Carew. Let's take a look at the incredible card of Rod Carew in 1970, the year he got hurt. I think he broke his leg in like May or June, something like that. Um, yeah, 366. And that would not even be his career best. He would hit 388 in 77. But we'll take this 366 card anytime we can get it. 3-5 is single dot dot, and that will give the Twins another run. Two zip. Armin Killebrew. 63 off Wood. First X. First baseman Muser. So 2-E-14, and that's a double play. So, Wilbur Wood getting touched up a little bit early in this game. 2 nothing. And here's Tom Egan in the third. 1-9, it's a base hit. Bobby Knoop. 2-7 is a K. Walt Williams, 1-7, double 104 is a double. Second and third for Louis Aparicio. The infield comes up, he's an A-bunner. 55 off of Bly Levin, a second C, but your infield was up. And with two outs, it's Carlos May. Two, three, rolls to third base. Bly Levin pitches out of it. And the Twins have a 2-0 lead in a must-win mode here. Top of the fourth, it's Tony Oliva. 5-10 is a walk. Off the wood card. Mitterwald. Two, eight. Let's take a look at George Mitterwald's card of the Minnesota Twins in 71. Had 13 home runs and about 400 plate appearances with this card. Two, eight is Homer. One to nine. Double. He misses the Homer. Gets the double. Oliva uh, will not challenge the minus two arm in center field of Buddy Bradford. Jim Holt, second and third, nobody out. 1 6 is a ground ball to short, that will score the run. Runner at second for Chico Cardenas. 67 is a K, and with two outs, Rick Rennick, 46. Uh, Rick Rennick has Carl, uh, uh, Wilbur Woods' number. It's a base hit in a right field. Mitterwald, I don't think he'll run. No, he's not. Yeah, he's only a 10 runner. And he just does not have enough wheels to try it here. So they have runners on the corners with two outs for Larry Heisel. 612 off of Wood is a sky to left. So, in one of the weaker performances of Wood on YouTube here, he's given up runs in the second, third, and fourth innings. It's 3 0. He's managed to avoid some damage by stranding runners. So it's up to the White Sox to bat their way into this thing with Dick Allen, your 1972 American League MVP. 3-6 is ball four. Buddy Bradford, 3-7's a K. Tony Muser, 1-10, is a 1-6-3 double play. Bly Levin pats his uh, glove after turning that one. Four zipping in the fifth. It'll be Cleo James leading off. 54, center X. Uh, Bradford is a 3-3 in center field, and he makes the grab. Rod Carew, 2 fives a walk. Now, he's a great base runner, of course, but not a good base stealer in this particular year. He'll stay put at first. For Harmon Killebrew, 2-3 skies to right. And with two outs, it's Tony Oliva. 55 off of Wood, bounces to second. This is uh, Noop, I believe, a 2E15 second baseman, and he makes the play. So Wood ends that string of individual runs, scoring against him in the fifth. As we go to the bottom half, let's pause a moment for station identification. This is the Shrimp Trawler video channel. Este es el canal de videos de camaroneros. Okay, bottom of the fifth, White Sox have to get going here. They want to win this series at home in five. It'll be Bill Melton. 35, let's take a look at Bill Melton's card of 1971. He had 33 home runs and 200 with a 269 batting average and about 600 plate appearances here. Um, again, he's really part of this meaty middle of the lineup with Carlos May, Dick Allen, Bradford Melton. That's a pretty potent punch for the Chai Sox. They're trying to ride that to the division lead in a year where the Twins and the Royals aren't playing up to expectations. The solo shot for Melton, we got a 3-1 game. Tom Egan, 
64 off Bly Levin as a catcher card. Uh -oh. Middle walls of 4015. Opening the door there, but he makes the play. Bobby Noop. 2 5. Bounces a short. And with two outs. It's Walt Williams. 53 off of Bly Levin. Rolls the first. We have a 5 1, excuse me, 3 1 game. 3 1 game into the six. It's Mitterwald. 54. This guy's the center X. Bradford's a three in center. Three, three in center. Makes the catch. Jim Holt. 46 off of Wood. Is single one of 14. Cannot get it. Rolls a 16. Chico Cardenas. 1 7 just misses the homer. Swings and misses. Strike out. Bottom of the sixth for the White Sox. Trying to build on the momentum of the fifth inning run. In the six, it's Louis Aparicio. You know, one of the things about Blylevin is that he is better against lefties. So the White Sox, indeed, they did load up this lineup with seven right-handed hitters. The only lefties are Carlos May and Tony Muser. So the righty Aparicio leads off in the six. Two six, double one to five is a base hit. And your tie run is Carlos May. Let's take a look at Carlos before he swings. Carlos May should not be forgotten when you consider that Dick Allen was your 1972 MVP. His teammate, Carlos May, tied him in batting average. Didn't have as many home runs, but he had 79 walks. He's got, Dick Allen had 99 walks. And Carlos May's an ace dealer. This tandem really did some damage uh, in the American League West that year. So, with Aparicio at first, here is Carlos May. 3-10, misses the walk and skies the right. Dick Allen. Let's take a look at Dick Allen's car as well, and you'll see. Uh, remember I said they tied for batting average, uh, but the strat cards are sorted. Uh, this one, when you have a home run 1-5 uh, through 10, that means you led your club in hitting. So, the tiebreaker, they gave it to Dick Allen, and Carlos May would be second on the team of hitting with, with 308 batting averages. So, you know, literally thousands of percentage point separated the two. So Dick Allen with a runner at first and one out. Two eight is a strikeout. And Buddy Bradford, let's take a look at him just so you can see what these White Sox have here. Bradford, one of the more bizarre cards you're gonna find, a reverse platoon he had 41% of his uh, bats against lefties where he clearly struggled, but his destruction of right-handed pitchers is why they love this guy so much. His stats indicate that he's a 238 hitter, but it's eight homers in about 180 at-bats. So if you just platoon him as a righty who faces righties only, he will crush some home runs. And if he does one here, we got a tie game. The pitch to Buddy Bradford. 33 rolls the third base, and it's Blylevin battling back in the inning. 3 1 into the seventh. A classic setting up here. Wilbur Wood against his nemesis, Rick Rennick, to start the seventh inning. Two nines a walk. Uh, he didn't throw anything close to the plate on that one. Larry Heisel. 67 is a K. Wilbur Wood, of course, is a starter nine. He can pitch <laughs> into extras as far as I want him to, just for your amusement and mine, folks. Bly Levin is a starter seven. So, Cleo James, 1-4, is hit by the pitch. Two on, with one out. For Carew, 3-10, and most hitters with this card are out, except for Rod Carew, because when you hit 366, you tend to, you have the tendency to have singles on 1, 5 through 10, 5, 6, and 9 and 10 in the 3 column. And that is a crushing single dot dot. Would have broken most pitchers. Gives the Twins a 4-1 lead. Puts Cleo James at third base. And the White Sox have to bring the infield up for Harmon Killebrew. One of the weaker starts for Wood this year. The pitch to Harmon Killebrew. 1-4, lefty question mark. We could try and score. Cleo James. A 16 runner against Carlo May's noodle arm, 1 to 19. He'll score in a sack fly, and now the Twins have a 5 1 lead. With two outs, it's Tony Oliva. 5 12, pitcher B. 
So Wood clearly has struggled today. He's already put 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 men on. Trails 5-1 into the seventh inning. Stretch time from Comiskey. We've been enjoying listening to Baby Huey. The Baby Huey story. This LP came out, I believe, in 71. Now this is an expanded edition that has an eight additional instrumentals after the uh, eight songs from the record. And by instrumental, we're talking about the Kurt on label, Curtis Mayfield's band, was his backing band. As uh, Baby Huey tragically passed away uh, in the, shortly after this album, I believe. At, he was like 26 years old. Great voice. Anyway, bound, back to the game. Bottom of the seventh inning. Bly Levin's going to continue with a four-run lead and face Tony Muser in the seventh. 55, bounces the second. This is Carew, a 3E37 at second base. He makes the play. Bill Melt won the offense today for the White Sox. 2-4, grounds to short. And Tom Egan, 54, pops to short. Burt, be home by 11. Might be home by 10.30 the way this game's going. He is sailing along. One run through seven innings. Brilliant start for Bly Levin when his team has needed him to do ace kind of stuff. And of course, the Twins have one of the better bullpens in baseball. Paranowski, Williams, and Reichert. So they cannot let this one get away. Wood will continue into the eighth to face George Mitterwald. 2-8. Same thing he did earlier. Homer, 1-9. to nine. This time he gets it. And that is a solo shot, and it is six runs off of Wilbur Wood, who will, will probably see his complete game streak broken today, uh, which, frankly, the dude could probably use some rest. Uh, Jim Holt, 110, sky's the center. Chico Cardenas rolls to second. And Rick Rennick, 69, pops to third. Wood, when he gets the dugout, his, um, his manager says, why don't you take the rest of the day off? Get some rest. It's just not your game today. So Wood will leave after eight as we go to the bottom of the eighth. Bly Levin against Bobby Noop. 55, rolls a second. Walt Williams. 311, flies the center. And Louis Aparicio, 1-8, grounds is short. 6-1 Twins about to send this thing back to Metropolitan Stadium. For the ninth inning, the Chai Sox will, will send a righty Dick Selma, acquired in the offseason. He'll come on in the ninth inning. Nice pitcher here, really four. Long man, but is probably better than the closer, should they choose to use him that way. Selma comes on in the ninth inning to finish this off. Uh, Larry Heisel. 65, double one at eight off of Selma's card as a single for the B Steeler. Now with a big five run lead, he might attempt to steal. Got a plus one arm catcher, why not? Let's try stolen base. He rolls a two, do we get the T rating of Egan? His T rating is eight, and we get it. So with that, Egan tosses the ball in center field and Larry Heisel scoots over to third base. Big break for the twins here. Runner at third, they gotta bring it up, try and keep this game close. Cleo James. 2-7 is a ground ball short plus, which means he shot it through the infield for a single, and it is 7-1. It is all twins today, folks. Cleo James with a six-run lead. He's going to attempt the stolen base. He gets gunned down. Trying to steal with a six-run lead. Get some glares from the White Sox dugout. So base is empty, one out. Rod Carew, 48. This guy's the center. And Harmon Killebrew. 1-9, let's take a look at Harmon Killebrew's 1970 card. Would you believe this is a slight step down from the 1969 card? Where he hit 48 home runs. He's only got 41 home runs here. 1-9, <laughs> however, let's take a look at the rest of this. 41 homers, 128 walks. He would have 650 plate appearances. Can play on the corners. Fortunately for the Twins, he could be their DH in an era where they didn't have a DH. So Killebrew gets to be uh, one of the better DHs in all of baseball with this card. Solo shot here in the ninth inning and it is an 8-1 laugher for the Twins. Tony Oliva, 2-8, grounds are short. 
Eight one in the ninth inning. Do we let Blylevin go for a complete game, or do we let his bullpen get some work? We're gonna let him go for the complete game. Carlos May two seven single. He runs to second without a throw, so he's on second for Dick Allen. Sixty six guys left. Buddy Bradford one ten single to right field. May holds up a third. Runs in the corners for Muser. If you break Blylevin, they'll, they'll get him out of there. Runs in the corners. They'll play it back open for a double play. Muser. 37, skies to right, be question mark. You don't want to get thrown out at the plate to end this game when you're trying to mount a comeback. So, Melton will bat with two on and two outs. In the bottom of the ninth inning, he is the offense to this point for the Chicago White Sox. The pitch to Melton, 3-7 is a base hit. That'll get a run in. And um, he breaks by 11. We'll let him get one more batter for the complete game since we have a nice little cushion here. Tom Egan will bat. 5'11", short X. This is the dependable Chico Cardenas, a 2, E12 at shortstop. And that is a GBA to end the game. Breaks, gives up a run of the nine, still gets a CG. Burt Blylevin and the Twins get a win in game five by a score of eight to two to send the series back to Minnesota. This division has turned out to be a lot of fun. Very competitive, even though they're not necessarily, you know, you don't have a team running away with it. So it makes all the games that these teams play with each other interesting. Don't expect anybody here, except possibly the Twins, to go in a roll in the postseason. Now again, traditionally, the Twins struggled against the A's and Orioles. Uh, nice complete game for Bly Levin. Selma in the ninth, a little rusty there. Three hits and two runs. Wilbur Wood, one of his weaker starts of the year. Nine hits, six runs. They were all earned. Four walks and three strikeouts. Put 13 men on. That's not characteristic of Wilbur Wood. 1 009, 0109. 8 12 2 8. 8 12 2 8, 4 3 1 4. That is game number five. We'll take a fun little look at the team's stats year-to-date here. As the Twins reclaim sole possession of first place for a day. So let's start with the White Sox. They are sitting at 500. Also, I want to mention something that in this scheduling, which has taken us to the All-Star break. Um, a team can play a minimum of 20 games and a maximum of 34 games before the All-Star break based on the scheduling. Everything is a best of something, best of seven, best of five, best of three. And after five games of this series, the White Sox have played 30 games. So if this game were to go seven, they would have played 32 of a possible 34 games. What does that mean? Well, it means they're like a 500 club, and they are a 500 club. But they fight and try and get to the end of the series as best they can. They don't get swept. They don't give up. They also don't sweep the opponent very often either. They're just hovering here at 500. Normally, teams like this are in competition for the Commissioner's Award, which would be a compensation pick next year. So the White Sox are in this conversation. Uh, they are hitting 258 with a 319 ERA. Um, looking at the stars of the team, I guess you got to go look at Allen. He's 32 for 110. That's slightly down with just four homer and 16 RBI. A little bit of a down year for that. You yeah, have higher expectations. Uh, Carlos May, he is not homered this year. He's 28 for 116. Another down year. I think your top hitter is going to be Louis Aparicio who has been to a couple All-Star games with this card. He might go again as a 330 hitting shortstop. So a nice year for Aparicio. For your Twins, your first place Twins, they're just a couple games over 500 at 15 and 13. The bullpen has uh, nine saves, as would, you would expect, and they're six and one. So they do their best work late in games, yet with a 15 and 13 record, it means that they probably have some weak starters. Tom Murphy's one and four, not very good. That one win was his 
no hitter, which is very odd. 0 and 4 with a no hitter makes him 1 and 4. Bly Levin has been okay. He's 3 and 5, the near A around 420. Uh, you got seven homers for Oliva and 18 RBI. Your leading hitters are going to be Carew with 41 hits. Yeah. Yeah, he's just a, he's ahead of Aparicio of the White Sox. He's 41 for 119. So Carew's hitting 345 with a strat card that has him hitting 366. So he's pretty much right on target there. So year to date. The league has played 417 games. We're hitting 263 with a 386 ERA. We're pretty much going to stay under four as an ERA for the first time in a long time. And that's really because we don't have as many strat cards available to choose from to get big offenses together like we can in the late 70s. So I think the late 70s, the league ERA is around 425, 415, somewhere in there. So good pitching in this era. Teams with good pitching should excel nicely. Uh, the series will go back to Minnesota for games six and seven if necessary. We'll report those at the end of this video. Thanks for tuning in, folks. We'll see you next time. Well, sports fans, uh, heck of a series. Uh, this is the box score of the game you just saw, the 8-2 beating of Wilverwood in game five. So what happened when we went back to Minnesota for game six? Interesting game. It is number four starter Lou Kraus for the White Sox. Not very good against Jim Cott, who's very good. But Cott uh, gives up the long ball in this game. It doesn't ultimately hurt the Twins, though. Three-run homer Dick Allen. Two-run double Phil Roof. Two-run homer Dick Allen. Three-run homer Harmon Killebrew. We're tied at five. Then uh, some sloppy defense to the White Sox. It's 7-5. But Jim Cott serves up another two-run over, this time to Louis Aparicio. We got a 7-7 game. Stays this way, we get into a battle of bullpens, when in the bottom of the ninth, Dick Selma gives up a leadoff double to Chico Cardenas. After a couple strikeouts, Cleo James, a bloop single, and the Twins get the walk-off 8-7 win to tie the series. So what happens in Game 7? Game seven, that's a different story. The Twins cannot finish the deal. The White Sox jump all over Tom Murphy. It's a 12-7 final. Dick Allen, who had two homers in that previous game, he keeps rolling now. He's four for five in this one. So suddenly Dick Allen is hot, which is not good news for the American League. Right when the White Sox need him to be. It is a 12-7 victory in a slugfest. Not even the great twin bullpen can slow the White Sox down. And with the White Sox winning this game seven, they win games two, three, four, and seven. They win the series four games to three. What does that mean for the bunched up standings in this division? Here we are, the Twins, just 16 and 14 in first, with the Chai Sox, 16 apiece, a game back. And even the Brewers and Royals have faint chances of storming up to the top here. Uh, this team, this division has played a lot of games. A lot of games are being played and they're hovering around 500, as you would expect when a lot of games get played in the parody division of the American League. Thanks for checking it out. Uh, congratulations, White Sox, for tightening up the American League Midwest a little bit. We'll see you next time.